and welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open their studios to the public. For more information, go to the website svos.org. Our guest, Holly Van Hart, is an award-winning local artist who recently won an opportunity to hold a solo exhibit at the Triton Museum in Santa Clara. She paints very textured, abstract nature art, and she's here to show us her technique. So welcome, Holly. Thank you, Sally. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the exhibition at the Triton Museum. What is the Triton Museum like? The Triton Museum of Art is a beautiful contemporary art museum located in Santa Clara, California. And they held a statewide painting competition. Uh, it was a, the call for entry included all uh, painting media and all subjects. And uh, based on the entries, there were a thousand, over a thousand entries. Wow. The, uh, the jurors picked 92 to be a uh, part of an exhibit at the Triton mm -hmm. from, uh, for the last few months. So there were 92 paintings on that exhibit um, that was called the Statewide Painting Competition exhibit. And then from that exhibit, you actually won the opportunity for a solo exhibit. Tell yes. us about that. Yes, oh, I was so honored. So um, it was kind of a fun story, actually. I showed up at the reception, just like everyone else showed up at the reception, just to see the work. And they hadn't given advance notice to anybody on who the winners were. Oh. So uh, I showed up, and then I found out that my painting right here, Possibilities Abound, had won first place. Excellent. Yeah, so I just felt so honored and excited. And uh, so the, and the first place prize is a solo exhibit at the Triton Museum of Art later this year. So when will that be? Do you know yet? Yes, uh, November to February. Oh, so it's a nice long exhibit. Yeah. So how many pieces do you think you'll have in there? I think so. I have a whole uh, uh, gallery to myself, and I'm estimating I'll need between 15 and 20 pieces. Uh, oh, excellent. Yeah. So you have your yeah. work cut out for you. Yeah, I do. So I have, I'd say, a third or a half of them done. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them are sold, but the new collectors agreed to let me borrow them back for the oh, exhibit, excellent. so I'm very Good. excited about that. Uh, but yes, I have my work cut out for me creating the rest for that exhibit. And uh, it's my first solo exhibit in a museum. And I'm going to work really hard to make it the most ex amazing exhibit that I'm capable of. Well, tell us a little bit about what inspires you to create this kind of art. Ah, so in, in general, I'm inspired by so many things uh, for art. So one thing that inspires me is just the creative process itself. So mm -hmm. coming up with the idea, uh, and uh, designing a series, designing a painting, getting out the paints and the brushes <laughs> and creating something new. That, that is just inspiring in itself. And if I create something new and I like it or it's a mm -hmm. personal breakthrough, then that's even better. So that's one thing that inspires me. Uh, another thing is um, I'm inspired by uh, res responses to my work, especially if they're good responses. Right. So if somebody says, hey, I really like that painting, oh. mm -hmm. or uh, if it wins an award, or somebody buys the painting, those things really give me a lot of energy. I, I find that very inspiring. And then there's, there's one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, the, one, the, the other thing is um, uh, that I love about painting is the connection it gives me to the collectors. So right. when, when somebody buys my work and then I know they're going to go home and hang it on their wall, it feels like a piece of me is going home with them. Right, exactly. And yeah, and so it's, it's going I to be there in their home right, for the rest of their lives. And I, I'm always going to feel connected to that person, whether it's already a good friend of mine or somebody that I never met before in some other country. Uh, I, I feel that connection, and I love that. Excellent. So... <clears throat> You have nature paintings. How did you decide on this particular style? I mean, you have nests and eggs, and you call it possibilities. What yes. does that mean to you? Yes. So th this painting that won the award is called Possibilities Abound. Mm -hmm. And the solo exhibit that I'll do later this year is going to have that same name, Possibilities Abound. 
And so um, you might think I've gone crazy for eggs and nests, and maybe I have, but really what I'm crazy for is what they symbolize. Oh, okay. So uh, the eggs for me uh, symbolize really the, the lives within them and kind of mm -hmm. the unborn promise of our own possibilities, Very that our nice. possibilities are virtually uh, limitless, right, if we put mm -hmm. enough energy and passion into what we want to do. And then the nests I paint in, a, in an, an abstracted way, and they represent really the variety of homes that we create for ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, as well as kind of the weird and wonderful personalities of people within those homes. So those are the nests. Oh, That's so what I like, is really the symbols. Symbols of, of the eggs. And it's so yeah. you plan a demonstration for us of how you get the beautiful textures and the luster. So why don't we move on to that part? Sure. And you can show us a piece that's not quite finished yet. Sure. It's barely begun. So I'll talk about my process as a whole, and I'll demonstrate a couple of steps of this process uh, right here. So this painting you've already started. What have you yes, done so far? Sort of. So this started out as a looking just like this. I, I buy the stretched uh, canvas on stretcher bars, except it was white. And what I did with it was I covered it with acrylic paints, uh, red and orange acrylic paints, and uh, added texture to it. So uh, I do oil paintings, but I do acrylic underpaintings uh, for a couple of reasons, and I'll, I'll show you the acrylic underpainting um, technique. So I like uh, having underlying texture because it, to me it feels like it gives the painting more energy. And I also like the underlying texture because the, the, I want people to look at the nests and the eggs and think about all the beautiful things that can happen with those uh, unborn uh, eggs and, and the possibilities in their lives. But we know that everything is not all smooth in our lives and that exactly. there are bumps in the road and, and that sort of thing. So the underlying texture is really meant to remind us of the kind of the other side of nature. Mm -hmm. So we've got the I like to represent in the, the oil paints the calm of nature and the beauty of nature. And then the texture is supposed to remind us of the other things. So that's um, what it means. And the, the way I create this texture is just by uh, taking some orange and red paint and taking a big old paintbrush and essentially uh, you know, covering the canvas like that. Um, but then I uh, do some special things to create texture that I'll show you here. Um, I'm just going to work a little bit on this side of the, of the canvas for, um, for demonstration purposes. So what I'm holding here is my favorite palette knife and um, modeling paste extender. It's essentially an impasto medium, meaning that it, it holds the, the texture and the shape uh, uh, very well. So I'm just dip, dipping my um, medium in the jar here and putting it on the canvas. And what I do with a palette knife, I use two tools primarily. I'll show you both tools. What I do primarily is just uh, take this blob of paint and do interesting things with it, um, or things that I find interesting, and uh, try to keep the, the texture coming up off the canvas so that I can use it really as part of the painting later. And I'll show you that part of the, the technique as well. So uh, big blobs. And you might think that any child can do this, but I do try to have uh, some rhythm to these uh, yeah. these textures here. In this one, it looks like you're sort of framing the center. To yes, yes, it does. I, I like to do that. Uh, some over here and here. Um, How long does it take that to dry? Uh, luckily, with acrylics, they're really fast drying, so overnight. Oh, that's good. I tried doing this once with oils. And <laughs> I had to wait months, oh. literally, literally months for it to dry. So I switched to acrylics. Uh, OK, and then the other thing I like to do with uh, this impasto medium is uh, do the same thing, but with a different tool. First, I'll apply it here. But I also like to use a comb. Sounds kind of weird, but I have just a regular hair comb uh, that, that I use. So I, I apply the impasto medi medium fairly thickly and then take a comb. I have to decide. Uh, usually I'd have patches of that you know, all over the place and do this in multiple spots on the canvas. But for demonstration purposes, here is the comb. 
I've been using for probably years doing the same technique. And I bend it like this so I can get smaller pieces of, uh, of the texture or larger pieces as I'd like. So I just take whatever I think uh, fits and run the, run the comb through. And I uh, would normally do that in a few places on the canvas, maybe even running it through something that's already on there like that. Uh, and then sometimes later smoothing it out with a brush so it's not so, uh, it doesn't jut out so much at, at either end. So that's how I do my acrylic underpainting, takes a day to dry, and then, uh, then I can go back the next day and start with the oil paints, and that's what I'll demonstrate next. So that texture is a nice way for the light to catch your painting as well. It has different places for it to shine. Yeah, it really does. When, when the paintings are lit well, they really stand out in a, in a way that I like. Okay, so now I'm switching to oils. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work on this side of the canvas and uh, create uh, just a, a flower, a very simple uh, flower. So normally my process is uh, with the oils, I'll do uh, four layers or five layers or six layers, each layer needing a few days or even a week to dry. So the, the uh, elapsed time might be a few uh, months, two to three months for a completed painting. And what you'll see today is just a very sketchy part of how I get started. And uh, I like to use a big brush, and I'll show you how I like to leave some of the, the texture and the color uh, showing in the finished painting by using this big brush. So I'm dipping it in some turpentine and some light yellow paint here. I'm just going to uh, kind of, in a flattish way, uh, go over the, the texture. And you can see how uh, big parts of the underpainting are showing. And then I have to decide how much of that do I want to leave showing and how much do I want to cover. So in the beginning, I like to err a little bit on the leave it showing side because I can always cover it up later. Right. But you can never get it back. Exactly. So. Um, so here's where you can really see the texture uh, come through. Is and there a particular type of oil paint that you use? Do you use more opaque, or is there a transparent layer that you use? Um, mostly opaque. Mm -hmm. Mostly opaque. Um, and what I'm going to do here is uh, show you another part of the technique. This is a piece of charcoal. I often sketch out a, uh, what I'm going to draw with charcoal first. And uh, I am going to uh, paint this little flower over here. It's something I've painted before, so it's just a copy of an image that I've painted. So this is a branch going right over some uh, texture, uh, going over some more texture, trying to kind of give an interesting shape to this branch. And then there's going to be a flower over here that uh, something like, like this. And what I like to do, too, is uh, this flower is going to be uh, reddish. And I do like to leave uh, parts of the reddish underpainting showing to show through in the completed painting as well. So um, more yellow here. And I'm just going to kind of paint around. So I will also leave some of the underpainting showing sometimes even in the, in the branches, like that, painting around the flower but leaving some room for the underpainting to show. And then once I get that done, I'm just going to move to the reds to, to work on the flower. So normally, I would have sketched out the complete painting right. and then used this, uh, this main color uh, wherever I could around the whole canvas. Right now, I'm just doing it around this single flower. So we'll start there. And now I paint the darks. So here's the, uh, what I did with the charcoal it was create this branch. So there's there are the darks, and this is the dark of the, uh, of the flower. Is there any particular brush that you like to use? I like to use flat brushes mostly. Uh, the brand doesn't matter so much to me. I've tried, tried them all probably. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Okay, so continuing with the darks here, there's a dark part of the flower right here. Uh, this is a dark red I'm using. And I do, I do paint abstractly. So this flower is based on really a magnolia flower, but it's not uh, any one particular type of magnolia, and I take license with the color. Um, a lot of magnolias have white around the petals, but if you painted white around the petals around a yellow background, you wouldn't see the flower. So I make it more red, for example, than it normally is. This is more red and pink here. You can see I'm going to need to lighten that up. So it looks a bit like you're mixing colors both in your, on your palette and on the canvas. I do. I do like to mix on the canvas, too. I think it gives it a fresh look that you can't get otherwise. And so this is the first layer of many layers. This is the said. first layer of many layers. So it's, it's just going to look like a, a sketchy kind of flower. It's not a completed flower, but it, it should get me maybe 80% uh, uh, of the way there, but it is important to let it dry uh, before I go back again and do the, the rest. So the other layers would be more detail? Would you get more, darker more to detail, lighter? And also, I, I like to preserve the freshness. And even if, and, and so if I went in and did, did the detail now, then I wouldn't be able to preserve that freshness. But if I let it dry, then I can go in and add detail, but still keep the freshness that I, that I like. So I'm almost done here. Well, maybe I'll add a little green to the, to the leaves and brighten up this red. So would you also work more on the yellow background? Uh, I would. So I would have, uh, I'd have more you know, detail in right. the whole painting. So I would, I think I might leave it just like that for now and then later see if that looks like too much when I step back and look at the completed painting as a whole. Maybe that's just too terribly distracting and then I might cover it up. Or maybe it's good like it is. So at least I have that option. Um, so you start with a plan, but then you modify the plan yes, based yeah, on what it looks like. Definitely. Well, that's yes, definitely. A lot of abstract painting <laughs> is like that. Definitely. And I like to put uh, unusual colors everywhere. So even in the branches here, I've got some red showing through from the underpainting, but I also like to uh, just jazz it up with some, uh, some reds or other really flower colors. So what do you think, Sally? Am I done? That looks great. Well, it's a good... Good start, for sure. Yeah, it's just so a you, start. So you brought some completed images that you have worked on um, that we can discuss. Let's take a look at those now so great. we can talk about great possibilities that have been completed. Oh, great. Thank you. OK. This is the painting Possibilities Abound that we looked at earlier. And this painting had been, this painting had been hanging in the uh, Triton Museum of Art up until Monday when I uh, picked it up and then this weekend I'm going to, to deliver it to its new owner in, uh, in San Jose. And um, the, let's see. It's a nest? The, yes, it's a nest. <laughs> with uh, eggs. With, with three eggs and uh, lots of texture. So this is really kind of, it shows all of the elements to my abstract nature painting with heavy underpainting, uh, the eggs to represent the lives and the nest to represent the, the homes and the variety of people within them. Okay, this is uh, called Nestled. And all of the paintings you'll see here today are part of my Possibilities Abound series. So they all have that same theme running through them. And the title of this one represents for me uh, what I think those, uh, those eggs must be feeling in there. They're really nestled in there securely with their siblings, uh, and they've got a, a very big nest around them, keeping them safe and, and warm. 
And in this nest, like the others, I use some uh, unusual colors to, to jazz it up a little bit. You see quite a few reds and dark oranges in there that might not normally be in a nest. Is there significance to the colors? Uh, you know, I, I like color. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I like to uh, I start with a photo reference or maybe a few photo references. And I usually print them out in black and white. And I do that so that I can make up my own color. So the significance is really what I think will resonate color-wise uh, for me and with the mood of the painting. This painting is called Abundance. And I actually titled this painting after uh, the woman who bought it, the collector. So she's an amazing woman with a very abundant and full life. And uh, I, I painted this, and the, the, in this one, the eggs are large. There are a, a lot of them. Uh, it, it, to me, it gives a feeling of abundance. And it's hard to see it in the image, but the eggs have a, a very opalescent kind of uh, rich opalescent quality to them. Yeah, you can see them. they're white, but they're also different colors. Yeah, they've got a lot of different colors in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this, uh, m this is meant to represent the abundance of possibilities uh, in, in somebody's life. This painting is called Unlimited Possibilities, and you can see something a little different here that uh, a heavier use of texture in different shapes. So unlimited possibilities, uh, I emphasize that by creating texture that uh, was in the egg shape, in the oval shape. So not only do you have the eggs in the nest, but you've got the texture behind it with more eggs and uh, egg shapes and more, uh, more possibilities. So I used the same technique. I created the texture first and then painted over it and left a lot of it uh, showing through. Yeah, very nice. This has a different feel to it. This, uh, I called it serenity. I, feel, I, I think it has a much more serene feel. These are, are robin's eggs, these blue robin's eggs. I think they're sitting there. It's almost like they know that they're well taken care of. They don't have a care in the world. They just have to sit there and be pretty until, uh, until they're hatched. So that uh, this, this one has a more realistic feel, like you picked realistic colors in the grass and the the eggs? You know, it, it does. And at the same time, the, the bluish background, right. is, that part is totally made up. But the rest of it does. You're absolutely right. Celebration. So this painting is, uh, is more about the nest. And you see a nest here that's made of uh, twigs and also ribbons. And there's a story behind this, because when I was a girl, uh, we had birds that would make nests around our house. And my mother worked with us on a project one summer. And um, we clipped pieces of yarn and put them in a place where the birds could find them. And we did an experiment. Was, was the yarn going to show up in the nests? And sure enough, it did. So Excellent. Uh, that was really cool. That's it was cool. red yarn. So and, yes, yeah, so I chose ribbon. But it's a, it's nice. a yeah, similar theme. So this is really, it looks like this bird was celebrating. This painting is called Opportunity. And with the, the reds and the whites and some blues in there, to me, this has a very uh, American kind of theme to it, right. where here in the US, I feel that we're especially fortunate that we can feel that possibilities abound. And we have a culture that supports that, and an educational system, and a legal system that supports that. So and this is space. really. Yeah. It's a nice space in that one. I oh. like that. Oh, thank you. So that one's called Opportunity. This is Possibilities in Blue and Gold. And uh, to me, this one has a celebratory feel as well. Uh, I kind of just want to wake those eggs up and say, time to hatch. Uh, get ready <laughs> yes. for the party, kiddos. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And this is the last painting, the last image that we'll look at uh, today. And it's called Possibilities on High. And as you can see, it looks very different from, right. from the rest. This is still in the Possibilities Abound series. And I'm working on more of these to come. But this is the only one that was ready uh, today. And you still see a nest up there in the upper right. And uh, the Possibilities on High with a warm yellow sky and a big, beautiful magnolia tree. 
I think those eggs have a really so significant start to their lives. That's where the flowers will come in. Yes. The flower that you started yes. would look like that one. Yes, exactly. Oh, very yeah. nice. So you are part of the Silicon Valley Open Studios. And you also have a background in sales from your high-tech career. And I was wondering how you engage people at your studio. When they come in and they mm. see your beautiful artwork and they're interested, what do you do? Oh, great question. So first, I welcome, welcome them into my home mm -hmm. and ask if they would like me to give them a tour of my home gallery or studio. And if they do, then I'll walk them around to uh, four or six or eight paintings, depending on their attention level. Right. And uh, I'll ask them would they like to hear a story about uh, each painting, and then I will tell them as much as they seem uh, receptive to hearing. And sometimes I'll ask, you know, does, does one painting strike you more than the mm -hmm. others, or do you like one more than the others? Uh, and just then be available for any questions they might have. So you really engage them in conversation. I like for to you do it's that. about a conversation. Yeah, well, that's, yeah that's part of the fun. Yes. And then you've also created what you call an ebook uh -huh. for prospective art collectors. Yes. Tell us briefly yes. about that. Yeah. Uh, can I show it to you? Sure. So this is uh, the cover of the ebook. It's called The Easiest and Most Fun Way to Buy Original Art. And I, I was getting the sense that some people were interested in buying original art, but they felt there was too much mystery to it. They oh, um, yes. were a little intimidated. Right. And I wanted to strip away that mystery and uh, just kind of put it out there that it's uh, simpler than maybe it sounds and uh, encourage people to really uh, to get out there and meet artists through open studios right. and other events. Uh, talk with the artist, get to learn about the art, and through that process you'll find something that you love. And um, it's a fairly straightforward process to actually buy the something that you love. Uh, and in the free ebook, I also give some tips on uh, how to enjoy your art even more once you bring it home. Oh, very nice. So this ebook is, uh, it's free. Uh, yes. It's less than 10 pages. <laughs> and it's available well, it's on my website. Yeah, oh. excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming to Talk Art. It's been very interesting, and your paintings are so beautiful. And congratulations on your solo exhibit. Thank you. I look forward to seeing it. Thank you, Sally. I'm very, yeah. very excited.